For all of us, I think there are events in our lives that impress our emotions so profoundly and brand themselves so deeply into our minds and into our memories that we're able to say many years later, I remember exactly where I was, I remember exactly what I was doing when such and such occurred. 9-11 is one of those. It was remembered powerfully last Monday, of course, being on the 11th. It still is being uh, celebrated in remembrance around the world in various ways and places. Some events are of some pro such proportion that history once looks back one day and sees that certain events may well be thought of as pivotal <clears throat> turning points in the history of humanity about how people think about the world, what it means to spend life together with everyone else who lives on this planet. Imagine what impact it must have had when people first began to consider that the earth might not be flat. And when Columbus literally sailed off the edge of the existing maps of his day, and instead of falling off the end of the world and falling to prey to great sea monsters who which some believe lurked out there, a whole new world of dry land was discovered. Some life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing events that have occurred in my lifetime include the development of the nuclear bomb, other weapons of mass destruction, the threat of which are vividly still with us today, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the assassination of Martin Luther King, Jr., assassination of Robert Kennedy, and on a different level, my marriage to just the right person. He's sitting over there. Yeah, she's turning red. And the birth of our children. The landing of Neil Armstrong on the moon and unmanned robots on Mars, and just recently the space probe, Cassini, that just dove into the atmosphere of Saturn just the other day. <coughs> Wars I have seen waged in the world in my lifetime. The development of high-speed computers for our homes and businesses, along with phenomenal advances in communication technology with cell phones and beepers and clipped to many people's belts and waistbands and in your pockets and pocketbooks and global positioning systems in some cars and of course the internet in general. As I've said before, there are events in our lives that impress us so profoundly, brand themselves into us so deeply that we quite literally are changed by them. They become part of our lives and determine in part what we think what we believe, what we do, and who we are to one another. I thought about this type of thing when I read some years ago of the death of Charles Bennett, who in 1955 introduced legislation to say, in God we trust, to be placed on our bills of currency. The following year, became a it became a national motto. What would be on your list of life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing events that you have experienced in your lifetime so far? If you have a minute this afternoon, write them down. And think about how they've changed the way you see the world and how you see people and what you do about it. The topic today, events that change our world, grabbed hold of my, <clears throat> of my imagination when I read, a, uh, I read in a, uh, an old magazine, I think it was Post magazine, it was a special edition of photographs that have changed our world. So I thought, oh, well, let's talk about events that have changed our world. As the anniversary of September 11th, approached, there was a headline in the New Haven Register that still said, this is 16 years later, says, images fade, impact remains, our lives are different. 
Surely the morning of September 11, 2001 was one of those life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing events that has impressed us all so deeply that we have been fundamentally changed in some ways. On that day, the massive terror struck our land, and you heard it oft repeated throughout the day by world leaders and people on the streets and clergy and civic leaders that our lives in the homeland of our country and world, around the world, would never be the same, and surely they have not been. Last week I read about the Petroselli's of Staten Island, whose son perished in those terrorist attacks 16 years ago. They spoke of how the experience became, quote, incorporated into our everyday lives and into who we are, unquote. I was deeply moved to share with one of the residents at a uh, nursing home uh, two weeks ago. She lost her granddaughter in the Trade Towers that morning, the Trade Towers of Manhattan that fateful day. With those gathered last week for a candlelight service of remembrance uh, in, in a community not far from here, the tears still flowed for many while at the same time we affirmed in song and prayer and reflection our hope and our faith for a brighter future. And now I hope that you will all lift up with me one more life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing event in history that I believe towers above all of the rest. It has impressed us all so deeply in the world so profoundly that it has the power to bring us here today to worship and to serve. It still has the urgency of needing you and me to be public witnesses to it some 2,000 plus years after it first occurred. The Bible tells us that that life-changing, world-changing event was and is the life of Jesus. And the life of Jesus back then, and the life of Jesus in the here and the now, as it finds expression through yours your faithful everyday witness and mine as well. As read this morning uh, by Pam from Philippians, the Bible directs us, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself and humbled himself, that we might know God as well as God's will and intent. I can't think of any event in history that has been more life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing than the fact that God is with us in this world and that this, this is unmistakably clear in Jesus. That's why I told the young people this morning, study the Bible, get to know who He is, because in the Knowing Jesus, you begin to know and understand what God is like. That's part of Jesus' critical message to us. Verse, verses from Psalm 139 affirm what people of faith know, namely that there is no place, no set of circumstances, no conditions on this earth or anywhere else that can push God out of our lives. There is no way to flee from God's presence, nor would we want to hopefully, and I say thank goodness for that. God with us becomes clear in Christ, and a life filled with faith is that one that knows how true it is and how much it helps. <coughs> Affirming God's presence in Jesus, we are called to be people through whom the mind and spirit of Christ find expression wherever we are, in the here and the now, in whatever we're saying or doing. One professor in seminary was con conspicuous in knowing the names of over 150 students in his lecture hall after only a few days. And his daughter-in-law let everyone in on how he achieved this. When she explained that the professor and his wife prayed for each student in the class every day, using the school's pictorial directory. As one student said, he knew my name, 
because each day he saw my face and lifted me up to God in prayer. God knows each one of us by name, blesses each one of us with gifts and abilities that are unique to us, calls us to service with those gifts and abilities in the spirit and mind of Christ. That's a truly exciting thought, and those, and those who, and churches who give themselves to it, discover how true and important it is, and how helpful and life-changing and pivotal it is to the community and the world. One additional reason why the event of the life of Jesus back then, and the life of Jesus now, is so life-changing and world-changing, is that in Christ we learn to love people and the wider world in the same way that God does. And that's really different, left on our own, from the way we do it. Loving and accepting, forgiving over and over, and encouraging and supporting and affirming people around us. And calling them to serve in a faithful way. Father Damien was a Belgian priest who volunteered to serve as a pastor in a community of lepers in a small colony on an, I don't know if I pronounce it right, is it Molokai Island in Hawaii? I hope I'm right. When first arrived, Father Damien assisted the leper colony in, build, in the building of shelters, the digging of fresh water wells, and the development of gardening. He founded a school for lepers, built a church sanctuary for worship, and led weekly services, and he prayed regularly, you who suffer from leprosy, may God help you and give you strength. One day he was slow in coming from his shelter to lead the service, as he looked thoughtfully out upon the congregation, and he prayed that day, we, who are lepers. His words were like an electric shock, surging through the circle of worshipers. They knew that he had become one of them, and one with them. In the same manner in which God knows and calls us by name, enters into our life and in our everyday situations, in a life-changing, thought-changing, world-changing <coughs> event of nearly 2,000 plus years ago. Let that greatest historical event of all time forever change and guide you, and live and guide and change the church wherever it is, not just this congregation, but churches all over, to be faithful churches, our church all together find wonderfully effective, meaningful ways to bear witness to the power of that event as it continues to be true in our daily life and work together. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that you call us to faithfulness always, and that you show us the way, that you shine light upon the path so we know what it is you're calling us to do and to be. We depend upon your Spirit as we receive you into our lives to continue to guide us when we're confused, when we make mistakes, that we might stand again and in your Spirit have the courage and the faith to fulfill your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray to have his mind amidst us and among us, to be of the same mind. Amen.